Indigenous knowledge and traditional medicine is central to exploring South Africa's biodiversity, which is yet to be fully explored. This is according to Dr. Tsepole Chaba from TUT's Faculty of Science Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. And Dr. Lechaba was speaking on the sidelines of the inaugural summit on the transformation of national innovation systems hosted by Science Technology as well as Innovation Minister Dr. Bladen Zimande. Through indigenous knowledge and traditional medicine, a majority of the plants and vegetation in South Africa, which is one of the most diverse countries in the world, could be exploited for some of the benefits. That has not currently been the case. Well, I'm joined now by Dr. Tsepo Lechaba just to elaborate on some of the benefits of indigenous plants of the country. Thank you so much, Doctor. Can you just take us through some of the products that we have here and some of the benefits that the people can reap uh, the rewards? No, thank you very much. Um, as you have rightly said, we have got indigenous knowledge as well as traditional medicine where most of our traditional medicine has not yet been uh, either discovered or described uh, in terms of their medicinal uses so at the Twan University of Technology Pharmaceutical and Biotech Advancement under the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences we are in a program where we are looking at your diverse microbes that can be used within the medicine space for various uh, non-communicable diseases as well as communicable diseases. First and foremost, what we have here is our Sorghum Probiotic Drink, uh, developed uh, as a spin-out from China University of Technology. Now, the Sorghum Probiotic Drink is called Nicello. It is the main purpose. It is good for gut health. If you've got any gut health issues in terms of um, any gut health, it's there. It will be able to assist with such type of things such as bowel movement, bowel sultrim, as well as dietary sugar control. So this is a product that is developed uh, from China University of as a spin out under Nutrigo SA. And uh, it's basically 100% organic. It's infused with probiotics. Probiotics as well, they are very good as well for gut health and so forth. So also what we then have, uh, we've got also mushroom cultivation. Now this is a mushroom that we do uh, cultivate rightly from Swan Investor of Technology under the guidance of Dr. Mani. Uh, he's a specialist in terms of uh, antimicrobial activities and so forth. So Dr. Mani uh, then runs programs in South Africa in terms of uh, teaching our South African communities how to grow and cultivate mushroom, which is also good for fiber, high in fiber as well as high in protein as well. Other than that as well, we then have got various um, uh, crops that we also look into. Now these crops uh, are then done in our lab at the Twani University of Technology where we take them through various extraction processes using various solvents. We then de take them through a process of antimicrobial testing as well as uh, cytotoxicity, NMR and so forth. Absolutely. And there was a bit of a controversy, I believe it was yesterday, where they tried to ban some uh, 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 weed or marijuana products uh, by the Department of Health. And I see you also have some of the products here. Uh, how do you feel about the whole, uh, you know, legislation surrounding uh, marijuana, whereas there are such benefits which I hope you can actually mention for us here today? Yeah, I think, it's, I think what is important is that it's important for us to understand firstly the difference between the, mar the cannabis products. And I think the problem that we have within our system is that uh, my uh, cannabis has always been known for recreational purposes and not for medicinal purposes and that has created a stigma over the years now from a medicinal point of view we then say that you need to distinguish between the different types of cannabis products that you have you've got hemp which is very low in THC, your tetrahydrocannabinol, then you've got marijuana, which is very high in THC. Now, most of the products that you normally see in the market, they contain CBD. And then most of your edibles, they would then contain your high THC levels. And I think that is where the ban is trying to focus on in terms of foodstuffs. However, also in terms of the foodstuffs, you need to be careful because of some of these nutritional uh, nutri uh, hemp products. They've got serious nutritional benefits in terms of the type of uh, diseases they would act on, especially when you look at your mostly your inflammatory diseases and so forth. So the type of parts of the plant that you get from hemp, you then need to know and distinguish that what uses does each and every part of the hemp plant has. For instance, you lose, you use flowers for CBD or are you using it for the seeds for something else and so forth. So the confusion is that it's the issue of, you know, your 
THC levels as well as your CBD levels. We need to distinguish between the two. Then you will then get to understand that some of the, like for instance, uh, why would you want to ban hemp flowers? Because they've got serious nutritional benefits as well as therapeutic as well as cosmetic uses as well. So it's very important that one should distinguish, uh, uh, you know, between, for a typical example, if you were to see from some of our products, for instance, if you look at your hemp, your hemp grains, you would look at your hemp grains. Basically, this is what you can make from hemp. This is a bag that is 100% uh, hemp and it's THC free. Uh, and we are saying to you that not only in the textile can you use hemp, but you can also use hemp in other, you know, for, for nutritional benefits as well. Animal feed, not only in terms of animal feed, but also in terms of animal bedding. That can benefit the type of, you know, animals that we produce. Because remember that hemp is very high in fiber as well. And it will assist you in terms of making sure that if there's any gut issues in terms of constipation whatsoever, you are able to do with such things. What we also do as well, we, where we can also show it's that we've got um, cannabis. And then this is your, 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 your flowers that we'd normally use to get the seed out. Now if you take this seed, uh, we, then, uh, we then take this and we extract it through our uh, super critical CO2 extraction uh, in collaboration with CSIR. And then what we then do after you have extracted that, you then get this type of oil. This is our oil that you then from this you then go into product development. Now this product development is there for cosmetic use and uh, you know it's there for people who struggle as well in terms of uh, muscle pains and so forth and so forth, arthritis and so forth. So you are able to use this oil and then you then uh, form it, put it into a product that you can use and this is a product that is also in partnership with uh, some of the doctors that we're in collaboration with, whereby they de develop this product, it's good for massage, it's good for pain, it's good, it's good for sports recovery. So it's already outside there, and then we are getting very good testimonials. So uh, cannabis, it's not a product that should just be sidelined. It's one of the most important bio crops that can really help our communities out there and can bring change in terms of many of the diseases that we are suffering from. And we've got people that uh, you know are doing many other things with. Uh, cannabis in terms of hemp and if we were to really look into the health benefits that it whether be it nutrition a benefit whether be it uh, health benefits it can really really make a difference uh, uh, in, in our communities absolutely thank you very much well as you can hear that's dr tsepole chaba actually highlighting uh, some of the important aspects of uh, us actually exploring traditional medicine and indigenous knowledge and with that it's back to you in studio